Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and we are here live on October the 6th, uh, this morning at 9 a.m. approximately, and we're here to talk about what's happening here and around Missoula. I got Flexor Friday video of the week, I got a couple news stories for you guys, and I also got your guide to the first Friday. It is first Friday, it is the first of the month, and in downtown Missoula, uh, Missoula really likes to celebrate the arts and provides free venues with hors d'oeuvres, wine, beer, whatever you name it, um, and you guys get to go out and about downtown tonight, um, just wandering around looking at some art, getting some hors d'oeuvres and drinks. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. I got pre-critic as well. So let's kick things off with a little bit of weather. So it is currently 28 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 62. Your low is going to be 41. There's some freezing fog, so you might want to watch out for that. But um, things are going to warm up. Um, so today might be one of the few last days for now. Uh, but this weekend, it looks like it's going to be 50% chance of rain up and through Sunday to a high 60% chance of rain. And then that storm front will pass us by. It looks like... Um, Columbus Day, um, still officially a national holiday, um, is going to be on um, Monday. So um, here in Missoula, they uh, basically, uh, Missoula City Council changed it to Indigenous Peoples Day. Um, I think I, uh, the be I think a really good name for it would be the holiday formerly known as Columbus Day. There's a lot of different politics behind it. I don't want to get into it, which I automatically did, so I won't anymore. I'll just stop talking about it. Stop talking about it. All right. So um, let's talk about some news items that are happening. Um, MCAT, uh, we'll, we will be covering the city council, I mean, city ward, can, uh, the ward council candidates, my bad, uh, mayoral candidates and district judges up for election on October 10th, which is a Tuesday hosted by the Missoula Downtown Association. And it's going to go on from 1130 to 1 p.m. inside the St. Patrick's Conference Center. So if you guys want to uh, meet basically every single candidate that's going to be running for election in November for the uh, local city council, local government type stuff, you can check them all out with uh, being hosted by the Missoula Downtown Association next Tuesday. Um, and also, MC... Oh, wait, let's say... Let's do this. MCPS is uh, plans to name a new school and has input by the kids of Cold Springs to help out. 1930 was when Cold Springs were built, and this year they'll see a major changes for future kids of a school formerly known as Cold Springs. The main reason they cannot simply carry over the name, according to Superintendent Mark Thane out of MCPS, is that the location will be outside the old school's ge geological namesake. Um, in a letter sent to Cold Spring families, Principal Susan Daniels said name suggestions would be accepted until Monday and should fall into one of three categories, a geographical place or a landmark in Montana, a national, state, or local figure, or a deceased person who made an outstanding contribution to MCPS or the city of Missoula. So if you um, have any suggestions, you can email SM Daniel, the principal at the school, at mcps.k12.mt.us. So I'll leave that on the screen for now. Um, so, that, I mean, honestly, like I sent him an email suggesting a name for his school. Um, but you, make sure that when you come up with a name for a school, you should actually Google to see if that actually already, already is a name for elementary school. Um, think about this. Uh, I did Bitterroot Middle School, but apparently in Billings, there already is a school called that. So I thought to myself, I was like, you know, John Mullen was a big historical figure who kind of made maps and whatnot. Why not uh, make it um, Captain John Mullen uh, Elementary? And then I found out that um, when I Googled it, it's, it's a school, it's a middle school in Spokane. So you got to be very careful. Um, I made that mistake, and that's, um, that's something just to think about. So once again, the email is smdaniel at mcps.k12.mt.us. You can also go to mcpsmt.org and look up Cold Springs Schools. You can also Google Cold Springs Middle School. Make sure you write in Missoula because there might be a couple other Cold Springs because there's one in Tennessee. Um, so... Let's talk about what's happening in the state. Uh, yesterday, the Billings School of Laurel Middle School sent an email Wednesday afternoon informing parents that a kid brought a gun to and from school grounds Tuesday afternoon around 4 p.m. Luckily, no one was hurt. And um, in an email, Superintendent Linda uh, Philpula wrote, The safety of our students is of the utmost importance to us. As we know, it is up to you, too. 
We appreciate your concern for all your for all our students. In other news, uh, the Legislative Finance Committee uh, heard hours of testimony on Wednesday from families regarding cuts to the Department of Public Health and Human Services. These cuts are part of a 10% reduction proposed across nearly all state government programs. The Health Department would cut 100. Um, and five million dollars in general fund money to meet a 10% cut that would result in losing federal matching funds of 136 million dollars cuts to the benefits and claims to up more than 80% of the cuts while cuts to operate expensive within the agency make up about 7.7% and cuts to uh, personal services or employee hours is about 6.9%. Nearly 100 people came from across the state on Wednesday to plead with legislators to return to, to Helena for a special session to raise taxes instead of making $229 million in cuts across nearly all state agencies to balance the budget. Uh, because uh, such a high percentage of the cuts come from services, and especially Medicaid services, many who testified Wednesday talked about how reducing services like case man management would force them out of house and home and into institutions. Um, a large uh, segment of testimony focused on the proposed elimination of the federal Part C program that provides early intervention services to infants and toddlers. It's unclear if the Republican-dominated legislature would shot down, would, who shot down nearly all tax increases Bullock proposed in the state of the last legislation. Um, the, um, the question remains, has any appetite to increase taxes uh, at all? Oh, oh, okay, so that's just, this is something I got from um, the Helena uh, um, Independent Report. Um, Bulk may call a special session whenever he wants, but the longer the wait uh, before some action is taken, the deeper cuts would have to be made as agencies keep sp spending above what revenue support. Um, if a special session is not called, Bulk can start making cuts as soon as the legislative f um, fiscal committee weighs in. So that's kind of what's happening there. And um, basically, the national and world news, um, in terms of just actual news as its own making the news, um, YouTube is threatening to take down RT News affiliate uh, for uh, putting up uh, uh, videos that would be uh, controversial among um, people on YouTube, and YouTube uh, has uh, basically um, changed their their ways because in a lot of ways people can sign up for ads and make revenue through them there as well. But a lot of times when people uh, post up YouTube videos with uh, basically threatening intent and uh, terrorist um, activity kind of, th kind of things. YouTube want, doesn't want to be the contributors to the, uh, the funds to those particular YouTube videos. And um, RT has been um, one of those news stations on YouTube that's basically not been afraid to talk about everything and anything. So uh, the post regarded more than 75% of videos removed from for violent extremism over the last month were taken down before, before receiving a single human flag. However, a lack of human flag has resulted in inaccurate results. In June, Google announced that its plans for tackling extremism, pointing to increased use of machine learning, more independent human experts, as part of YouTube's trusted flagger program, taking a tougher stance on controversial videos and expanding counter radicalization efforts. Um, of course, I got to took a, a clip from RT's live coverage of the federal council meeting that was just yesterday, talking about uh, how they are reacting to uh, YouTube's uh, methods to take down these videos. The mastermind behind all these things that is that uh, are perpetrated against us, they need to stop that. Often we can hear that we are somehow fighting against the media, combating media. No, we're not doing that. We are combating the instruments used against us in an aggressive way under the guise of the media, of mass media. All right, so that was um, uh, one of the uh, representations of the uh, Federal Council meeting in Russia. Um, that was Apen Kumad. Um, of course, in September, the U.S. Department of Justice sent a letter to the company that supplies all services for RT America, demanding that it register as a foreign agent under the Federal uh, Foreign Agents uh, Registration Act, the FARA. The request risks um, compromising the personal data of employees and may pose a real danger to their safety in, in the witch hunt atmosphere which has been established in the U.S., Russian Foreign Minister uh, spokesperson Maria Zakova uh, stated last week. Um, meanwhile, no proof of RT's alleged influence on the 2016 election has been proved, proven. Um, RT uh, was mentioned in the report over a hundred times, but not a single example of election interference was given. Of course, that's just another story. There's a lot of things going on with this. There's a lot of different moving parts. But of course, um, 
There's also more information about this, of course, because uh, RT is also uh, aligned in some ways with Julian Assang, who also is the WikiLeaks founder as well. But I don't want to get too into it and get too political about one thing or another, so I'm just going to end it there. We have some new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT, which uh, regards the Missoula City Band, and we also have Increasable of Change talking about uh, progression in Montana after the end of the Copper Kings. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about some movies that are coming out that I'm going to criticize. So stay with me. technique over the years, hasn't it? At that point, involved with any of it. The thing that, looking back at it, what strikes me is most like the process on governmental reorganization before it and then with the CONCON, the, the age of these people. You know, they were all, you know, in their early to, to mid-20s. Dale was 28, you know, for the bulk of the of the, mm -hmm. the con con. Um, you know, I don't envision a time in Montana history where it, maybe during the, the territorial convention where everybody was relatively young, but um, when you look at the process now, um, it certainly isn't people in their mid 20s. Uh, yeah. the, the other thing about, uh, about the people, uh, uh, there were about probably about 10 research analysts, almost all of them were from Montana. Yeah. Uh, they all had Montana roots. And I think, when I think back on it, I think that's pretty amazing. Uh, these weren't people uh, who had hired, who were from out of state, and who came, who were on the Constitutional Convention circuit, and, uh, and he, he did not hire those people. Uh, he hired people uh, from Montana. All right, welcome back. Now let's talk about some movies that are coming out. Let's kick things off with a... Uh, <sighs> here we go again. Uh, you know those movies that existed in a time when director's cuts were necessary? Well, check out this movie about a guy who hunts robots. It's kind of like Reverse Terminator. Blade Runner 2049... <laughs> you can pretty much put any date there and be like, oh, okay, whatever. Uh, and it stars Ryan Gosling in a movie that doesn't have Emma Stone, so you know it's going to be good. Oh! Um, Harrison Ford comes back again to a franchise that should have ended with him that's not beginning a franchise in the first place. Um, basically, enjoy this uh, reboot sequel uh, cash grab. Um, film nerds are required to like this movie, and so will you, so don't get destroyed on Blade Runner f forums as well. Um, moving on, the next movie that's coming out. Oh, what up, bronies? It's. Did you know that a toy franchise got another chance because older male collectors, and uh, um, they are now making a movie based on toy sales. Usually, um, a lot of times, uh, movies and cartoon series, um, they try to perpetuate toy sales, but with the um, older adults, otherwise known as bronies, they are able to basically get enough money from those guys to make. Uh, they're a, a revamped show, hence making a new movie and making more of My Little Ponies. For uh, So um, definitely My Little Pony, the movie, uh, geared towards little girls, but obsessed by older adult males, a.k.a. bronies. Um, watch this wonderful light romp of colorful stereotypes as they interact and exist in a world of color. I'm kind of unaware of the story, but I assume that the Great Land is invaded by a great evil, um, and the little ponies must work together despite the differences to defeat the bad guy. Or girl, Wh whatever. I don't know. Uh, moving on. Um, up next, we got uh, Idris Elba, no relation to Jessica Elba, and Kate Winslet. Uh, 
not as British as you may think, um, star in this movie about survival with a small part played by Jeff Bridges' brother, Bo. Uh, the Mountain Between Us shows, uh, shows two people how they survive a plane crash in the wintry mountains, um, but then they have to survive the harsh wilderness without a phone signal. Millennials eat your heart out as two people in a wrecked plane must wait for rescue or navigate the wilderness so they can get to the theater to watch this movie that's probably based on a true story. Dear TripAdvisor, I like the convenience of your flights, but with the whole plane crash and all, I'd like to have to rate this trip two and a half stars. Uh, and that pretty much concludes everything pre-critic and all the new movies that are coming out. I got a movie for you guys made by our flagship program at Hellgate High School. So without further ado, take it away, Austin. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kuwaka News. I am Joe Weatherman. Today, up tonight, you know, uh, President Trump meets with Professor Pancake to discuss the truth about climate change. Um, apparently, every, like, climate change is a craze now these days with people and their Twitter phones and stuff. Uh, that's gonna happen about two weeks, I think. I mean, it's kind of confidential. We probably shouldn't be talking about it. My attorney says I shouldn't. But that's alright. Hopefully I don't get arrested. Um, in other news, there's, uh, a man running around the streets. His name's... Arctic Man Austin? He says that he's gonna blow up the sun, apparently. Uh... Here's, here's a call that he uh, forwarded into the news station. Ah, it's too warm outside because of global warming. Open up your refrigerator and throw the ice cubes into the river. If you don't, I'm gonna blow the sun anyways. Ah! He's now in custody. So, uh, Joe, over to you for, uh, the one that... Hi, it's Joe! It's really cold! Uh, it's like negative 30! I can't move my hands! Uh! Thanks, Joe. Uh, in other news, a uh, puppy was rescued today by a local fireman. I... Apparently, he uses trusty hand axe to flip the bus over and save the puppy. He's quite a cute Dalmatian. And we have a video. Uh, caught by an onlooker. Alright, X, we're gonna go get him. Yep, going up there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna save you, puppy. Oh, oh, oh no. Alright, let's go home, puppy. Yes. Anyways, uh... On, on the same day, I... There was a tragic bus accident reported by the bus administration. It's, it, it's quite a terrible thing. About 50 people died, even the bus driver. Um, let's, let's have a video of that right here. Hurry it up! <laughs> Alright, let's go home. Ah! Um, it's quite tragic. Anyways, uh, th we, some good news. Uh, we have, uh, like, in Michigan, Michigan Institute of Technology has let in its first student. Uh, he's a Cthulian, and, he, uh, he comes from a very distant planet. Uh, about five parasects, uh, that way. Uh, if you want to travel there, it's going to cost you a lot of money, uh, and a lot of time, especially to get through tribal stages. Worse. Uh, yeah, no, he's a, the Cthulian, uh, he, he, it's a very interesting story about letting him in here. I, we have a few words here. I, we have a few words from this man. It's quite a, quite an interesting fellow. Um, which is really weird, since uh, they, like, when you look into, like, the eyes of him, he makes you go mad, because you learn everything about the universe. Anyways, uh, on to Spider-Man for the sports. I'm Spider-Man! I'm Spider-Man! PT. 
pizza time. Thanks, Spider-Man. Um, here at Kuwak News, uh, we're going to be telling guys something very important. Um, it's something that you should live by now. Uh... In the really nice Star Wars movie, Empire Strikes Back, everybody gets the quote mixed up. It's not, Luke, I am your father. It's, no, I am your father. I'm Joe Weatherman, and this is Quacka News. And hot shot first! I'm sorry. All right, welcome back. And let's talk about your art guide for downtown Missoula. So let's kick it off with... The Radius Gallery. At the Radius Gallery, um, Minefields um, comes to you an eclectic mix of artists whose work invites you to um, into imaginative worlds. Uh, Courtney Blazon, Joe Buddy, Susan Carlson, Pamela Cohey, uh, Michael Deming, Theo Ellsworth, Laura Gillespie, and uh, Philip Slaughter. So, those are a bunch of artists that will be featured at the Radius Gallery, so check them out. It's going to be wonderful. Um, we got uh, ResMade Photography uh, from Tear Students. Um, ResMade is a group of e exhibit exhibition featuring 14 student photographers from Two Eagles River School in Flathead Indian Reservation, Pablo. The exhibition um, documents the spring of 2016 when photographers, educators, and mentor David Spear led a group of students to New York City. And this will be at the Missoula Art Museum. So just so you guys know, all these art um, installations all across downtown Missoula all start at 5 and they go about until 8 o'clock. So you might not want to risk the 7 to 8 uh, span of period, but you want to probably be there between 5 and 7. Those are the prime times for it uh, because 7 and 8, some of the places might be closing down. So that's just a, a rule of thumb and what I've noticed. Um, Nancy Rischoff uh, is going to be at the um, Interim Healthcare, Landscape Paintings, Real and Beyond Refreshments. Um, we got uh, Forest Spirits. It's going to be at the Bernice's Bakery. So at Bernice's Bakery, uh, Joseph Smith, um, not that Joseph Smith, will be, uh, as Montana native, creating uh, art that has been passion of mind throughout his life, inspired and encouraged by talented mother. Um, he's worked in many mediums, and he was inspired by a huge old dead tree that in his lifetime had surely seen many things. Distant for a burn pile, he thought he deser it deserved to live on through some of his artwork. And this is called Forest Spirits. And that's going to be at Bernice's Bakery. Um, Clocks by Anna Mora. And this is going to be at Betty's Divine. So October's first Friday at Betty's Divine features the art of Anna Mora. Inspired by the mid-century design, uh, Mora has created a line of handmade clocks for this show. Util utilizing the Starburst, Space Age, and Atomic Design aesthetic, the clocks are made of, of plexiglass, uh, lucite, and includes hand-painted uh, decorations. And you can check it out. There's hors d'oeuvres and wine and all that stuff. Um, fiber Finesse, Gallery 709, inside M Montana Art and Framing. Um, they're doing uh, Fiber Finesse, a show of latest fiber art by local well-known artists and emerging fiber artists Melissa Arnold, Judith uh, Colvin, Odette Grassi, Emily Ibsen, Marion La uh, Lavery, Molly McKinnon, Posey Nichols, uh, Cheryl Cyberman, uh, Anna Taft, Bonnie Dars, and Ricky Van Burkham. The ex exhibit is uh, on. It's basically going to be all the way until October 27th. So you, if you miss it tonight, you can go check it out. You can call uh, 541-7100 for more information. And you can always go to montanaart.com for more information about this. And it's going to be Fiber Furness, and it'll be at uh, the Gallery 709 inside Montana Art and Framing until the end of the month. Vesucci, uh, is for the October's First Friday, uh, Jessica and uh, Lido, um, after 11 years of working side-by-side -side, uh, as photographers, husband and wife, um, saw the alliance between personal and professional blur er even more as the birth of their first child. The series of images uh, titled Sleep Deprived Parents Double Vision combines images from each photographer's into unique signature photos. Images were chosen by each photographer that resonated with them personally. So you get to check that out. It's going to be at La Stella Blue. And then um, we got Antonia Wolf. So uh, she's a photographer, and she'll be talking at the Shakespeare and Company about photography. Um, and she, this is what she said. I explore in 
all its forms, human life, the natural world, and animal world. I am drawn to vivid, vital colors and textures. The essence, uh, essence of places are what move me. With my camera, I strive to capture flashes of beauty wherever I happen to find myself at home or abroad. I have been asked why I concentrate so much on beauty when there are so much despairing images to convey. My answer is simple. It is the mystery I am always tracking with my lens. Beauty can be found even in the most agonizing, tragic places. So she'll be talking at um, Shakespeare Company, uh, uh, Atonia Wolf. Um, our last um, um, uh, person is the George and Phil show. Uh, George McCauley and Phil Mann is going to be at the Clay Studio of Missoula. So um, a lot of times you got to be really fast when it comes to this because Clay Studio of Missoula has a lot of artists that go through there. So anything that, as soon as something pops up there, it, it will usually leads pretty quickly. So um, they have taught and conducted workshops internationally, a uh, recipient of three national endowments for the arts grants and the prestigious uh, Roy Acuff Chair of Excellence of the Arts of Austin, PA State University in Clarks um, Clarksville, Tennessee has pottery and sculptures are included in international collections in 11 countries and has been shown worldwide in countless ex exhibits. Um, he maintains a studio in his home in Helena, Montana, where he makes colorful um, earthenware pots and narrative sculptures. So you can check that out at the Clay Studio of Montana, and that pretty much concludes everything arts. Um, but, of course, if you want to check out um, the Zootown Arts Community Center, uh, they have uh, the last of Basically, it's the last time you guys get to see uh, Monsters, uh, which is the Missoula Monster Project, which has um, Missoula area uh, elementary schools team up with local artists to uh, basically bring their monsters to life in different forms of art. So uh, here is a kind of a tease, but you guys should check it out because um, tomorrow is when they'll be taking it out. All right, let's talk about some of the events that don't involve art. Um, of course, some of you uh, really love art, and it's great. Um, art is subjective, and so am I. And I usually uh, don't like to look at art too much, um, but when I do, I like to uh, get a nice little sense of art, and I like to wait a little bit before there's like a, a whole new thing I can look at. Um, so that's just me. Let's talk about events that are happening in and around the Missoula area. So let's kick things off with uh, this morning. Um, Family Storytime and Tiny Tales is at the Missoula uh, Public Library starting at 1030. So you get kids age range from birth all the way till five or six. Two different story groups for older kids that are learning to read while the younger kids get more exposure to words as well. Um, little Bits, uh, Little Bits is going to be at Spectrum Discovery Center. Uh, the Spectrum Discovery Center is open for all visitors of all ages and it's 350 for anyone 40 and over and if you're under three you're getting free and their activity of the day is little bits little bits um, watercolor painting class at Missoula Public Library at noon today as well um, mostly they have it every single week every single Friday day. Friday day Friday day no no just stop Friday um, come experience the calming satisfaction I'm not acting calm so let's try to be calm um, experience the calming satisfaction of creating and working with watercolors during this class in the large meeting room or you can do yarns you want a new knit, crochet, bring your lunch and your latest project to the boardroom 
um, every Friday at, t at noon and end your week with some crafty fun. Um, Developmental and preschool screening clinic. Um, Clinton School District is opening a free develop uh, as having a free development and preschool screening clinic for children's ages zero to five in the Clinton School District, which will be held um, today at 1 p.m. in the Clinton Elementary School, beginning at 1 p.m. and it will go until 3:30 p.m. You can call um, 825-3113 to schedule an appointment for your child's screening or to receive receive more information. This free screening will include. Um, gross motor, fine motor, speech and language, um, developmental concepts, and hearing and vision, vision screening. So just to kind of give you a check and see uh, how your kid is doing, it's always nice to see um, maybe uh, you notice something about your kid who's like, oh, maybe because uh, a lot of times if you don't catch, maybe they have astigmatism in their eye, they may, they may need glasses. So, um, you know, that could really basically take them back a, a year or two when learning how to read, too. So you might want to watch out for that. Uh, so Montana Film Festival is happening at the Roxy Theater, and they're kicking things off um, for the third year, and they invite you to come gather at the theater and uh, the campfire of the silver screen and rediscover the virtues of social com uh, community through cinema. Montana Film Festival celebrates film as art, enriches the lives of our community and members, and takes our filmmakers on their first date with Montana. So the whole idea is the Montana Film Festival gets films from all over, anybody who wants to submit and basically host it, and um, basically bring ideas from all across the world and kind of express creativity through film. And that's going to be at the Roxy Theater. Um, Lucky is one of those movies. It's an independent film made by uh, John Carroll Lynch, his uh, director, director, uh, directorial debut, and he is the son of, I believe it was David Lynch, um, who is Twin Peaks and all that stuff. Um, so Lucky is about a 90-year-old atheist and a quirky character that inhibits his off the map desert town, having outlived and outsmoked all his uh, all his friends, the fiercely independent Lucky finds himself at the uh, precipice of life, thrust into a journey of self exploration, learning leaning towards uh, that which is so often unattainable. Enlightenment. So he's looking for enlightenment as an atheist. So it's acclaimed character actor John Carroll Lynch. Uh, okay, so. It's basically a love letter to the life and career of Harry Dean Stanton, who uh, just died a couple weeks ago, as well as uh, he died at 91, and he was the guy who was uh, basically the captain of of um, in of the ship in the movie Alien, Ridley Scott, and he was also in uh, Paris, Texas, and he was kind of like the main guy in that movie. He's always done a lot of character acting. He's the kind of guy in the movies who be like, oh, that guy. So um, this movie, Lucky, is basically him in this movie and a lot of people are already buzzing about potential post um um i guess it's a post hominis i'm award for his performance there as well so um so basically it talks about mortality loneliness and spirituality and the human connection so that's kind of what's happening there. I definitely want to see this movie. It looks really good, and uh, it's definitely with an actor that most people just kind of put to the side and and just kind of be like, oh, I remember that guy. But this puts him at the forefront, and you get to enjoy some acting as that as well. I know I kind of lingered on that a little bit longer, but you should guys should check it out. Roxy Theater likes to bring in a lot of good films. Um, they also mentioned that um, a, another film that I'm actually looking forward to is called... Um, um, Loving Vincent, and it's about the story and life of Vincent Van Gogh, um, and told through the perspective of watercolor painting. So it's the first ever watercolor um, animation movie. Uh, no, well, not watercolor, but acrylic um, oil painting. So they use acrylic oil painting, and they had hundreds of artists collaborate on this to basically make each picture. And it's crazy. It's very. Um, inventive and it's going to be very interesting and they said in the Roxy they will be playing it in November so I'll talk about it when it comes out. Um, Pray for Snow Party. Uh, the West Central Montana Avalanche Foundation presents the 11th annual Pray for Snow Party. It's from 5.30 to 10.30 at Karis Park. The Pray for Snow Party is an evening of free fun, food, and live entertainment for the entire family. The event will offer Big Sky Brewing Beers raffles, local food vendors, and even Bounce House for Kids with music by the year of the favorite funky sound, Shake Well. And you guys can enjoy this. And it's just a party. Hang out. And it's going to be hosted by the West Central Montana Avalanche Foundation. Um, it's about education and awareness. Um, and, you know, it, you, you can never learn enough about what to do in the case of an avalanche. Sixth annual UM uh, Choral Gala Concert. 
the University of Montana sees an opening performance with music presented by all the UM choirs. Uh, here, uh, lifting Irish lullabies, grand uh, choruses, and electrifying spirituals as a talent from over 100 UM musicians kick off the 200, 2017 2018 performance season. And speaking of performances, uh, Disneyland, uh, I mean, not Di no, Disney's. The Lion King Jr. with MCT. MCT, Center for Performing Arts, um, is doing The Lion King. So Kuna Matata will be uh, live on stage uh, with Missoula Children's Theater. The performances will take place on Friday tonight, October 6th through Sunday the 8th, and it will be presented by MCT Center for, for, for Performing Arts. The story is highly entertaining. Um, it's the 1994 Disney animated classic. In 1997, Disney created a stage version which became a smash hit on Broadway, and it's still going to Vegas today. And the Disney Musical Theater International then adapted the Broadway show into a junior version so you can so that the younger cast could successfully perform the beloved musical. Uh, of course, uh, they already went over the First, I already went over the first Friday events, so you guys can check out all that. I'm going to take a little break, and then we're, uh, but stay with me. I'm going to conclude your events. There's a lot going on over the weekend. There's a couple of festivals, so I'll talk about that as soon as I come back. After this art clip, I'm um, going to be at the Gallery of the Visual Arts. Thanks to our very own Rick Phillips for uh, producing that wonderful program um, of art clips. Anyways, let's talk about some Saturday events. Just so you guys know, all the Saturday uh, morning markets will end on, oh, the last day is October 28th. So you have until the end of October to check out the farmer's market. And then, of course, they do be doing the winter's market. And they usually do that at the Elks Lodge over the winter time. So there's still chances to get your winter fixed as well. Uh, but... This is why I hate growing a beard. <laughs> All, okay, so Diva Day 5K Community Medical Center is celebrate women in Missoula and throughout Western Montana as Missoula All Women's Day Diva day 5k run walk event be part of an event that promotes empowering women of all ages and abilities western montana divas are resilient and influential fierce confident powerful determined strong and driven join our community of mothers daughters sisters and grandmothers friends and family to make the most awesome morning filled with physical activity um, camaraderie and laughter and it starts at 9 30 a.m at community medical center and they usually uh, run around the fort missoula so um the fort missoula fort missoula regional park so you get to check that out and they're building the softball field right now. You can see the centerpiece for their uh, five softball fields. It looks really cool, so you get it'll give you a good chance to go check it out al along the way while supporting the strong women of Montana. Uh, Montana Film Forum, the Roxy Theater, is a place for Montana's film community to gather, network, discuss for, uh, production activity, share success, resources, and challenges consisting of a series of presentations and pitch sessions free and open to the public. Uh, this is happening from 10... Um, a.m. to 10.30 a.m. It's Montana Film Office State of the Union Address talking about some of the films that are made in Montana. So if you're interested in pr to production and being part of a film, that's the one you want to go to and talk about some of the successes. And then they have a more of a break and chat so you can talk about this stuff. And then from 12 to 1, best ideas, a lot of ideas, small group breakouts. And then by 1 to 2, hope and um, gripes, an open floor pitch session. session. 
So you guys, between 1 and 2 p.m., you guys get to pitch all your movies and be like, hey, I have a good idea for a movie or a documentary or a film. Let's do it. So that's kind of what they're going to be doing at the Montana Film Forum during the uh, Roxy's Montana Film Festival. Um, ice skate for free day. Um, so the Missoula Fairgrounds are basically kicking off the ice skating season, um, even though they've kind of already done some ice skating stuff along the ways, but this is more of their big season, and basically from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Saturday morning, all ages are welcome, enjoy games, prizes, and free skating tips, and a register for the next session to learn to skate classes, which begins October 21st. It's never too late to learn to skate. Um, brought to you by the Missoula uh, Figure Skating Society, or no, wait, Figure Skating Club, my bad. Um, and I didn't, I, I didn't mean to rhyme, <laughs> but it just happened that way. Um, it's never too late to skate. That's the slogan. That actually should be their new tagline for an event. It's never too late to skate. Um, Kizomba Workshop, Downtown Dance Collective. Um, have you ever figured out there's something else out there besides salsa, swing, or tango? Now what? Learn the basic techniques of Kizomba, which is steps and movements that are there, and the dance for the entire evening. Uh, they also di uh, discover how to create a safe, intimate connection with other partners. Um, uh, emphasis on safe, um, sometimes called the African Tango. This five-hour workshop will introduce you to a rhythmic improvisational dance style that is a lovely fusion of tango, bachata, uh, zouk, and zemba. Um, this um, class is good for beginning of continuing students, techniques, and basic movement patterns, and they'll be covered by beginning of workshops followed by connection and dance styling of moves. So this happens uh, from noon to 1 p.m. at the Downtown Dance Collective, and yeah, this is one of many sessions. You can check it out. Lion King Jr., once again, they'll be doing it um, matinees. They're doing a 3 p.m. and a 5 p.m. at MCT on Saturday. Sunday, you got Save Kids Fair um, um, starting at uh, 12 p.m. Community Medical Center. The Save Kids Fair is a free community event for all kids of all ages to have fun and learn how to stay safe at home, on the road, and during play. Meet a safety experts and explore fire trucks and the uh, life flight helicopter, a uh, distracted driving course, the buckle up challenge, and smokehouse face painting, and so much more. UM Homecoming kickoff is happening 1 p.m. at the Southgate Mall, 1 to 2 p.m. So um, UM Homecoming Week is happening. Today is the Sentinel High School's homecoming day as well. Um, and they'll be doing a homecoming football game tonight, which MCAT will be live streaming on our uh, Facebook page. So you can find us at Missoula's Community Media Resource. You can also type in MCAT um, on Facebook, but also you can look us up online by going on to MCAT.org. So that's basically kind of what's happening in terms of events. If you guys want to know what's happening late nights, um, they have um, Country Line with special guest Bob Wire at the Sunrise Saloon tonight. Six annual, oh wait, no, no, Mutt's Light Charlie is at the Union Club. Um, Brothers Go, or Gao, is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge um, tonight. Um, Moon Taxi is going to be at the Woma tomorrow night. Opera Theory presents Blue Skies, a gal concert. There's a little winer winery and event center. Um, Latin Dance Nights at the Downtown Dance Collective. Absolutely with Chris Moon at the Badlander. Dusk at the Union Club. Troublesome at the Sunrise Saloon. Karaoke at VFW. And Sweatshop Sneakers at the Top Hat Lounge is going to be Saturday night. Um... Let's see, what else is going on? Hmm, I can't really think of anything that's really going on in and around the Missoula area, but I just want you to remind you guys that a great way to watch all these videos and more is to log on to my website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out twice. You can also go to MCAT.org. Make sure you like us on Facebook so you can get notifications of any of our live-streamed sports events, all sorts of wonderful things. MCAT has been doing a lot of live streaming. Uh, we did the UM um, President's Candidate Forum, so you can check that out. We'll be posting um, all the uh, City Council Ward forums as well, so you get to know who is going to be representing you in your ward, and actually you get to know which ward you're in. So um, by election, uh, you won't be caught off guard being like, oh, this name looks good, and just write it and just putting a fill in the dot right there. So you can learn more information by logging on to MCAT.org, and you can also find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. It's a wonderful resource. All you got to do is look up MCAT and you'll find us. So um, once again, I want to thank everyone for joining me this morning. Have a wonderful weekend. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph.